Yo, hello. Hello and welcome back to the Fantasy on Tap podcast. I'm your host, Eric Sonier, here with my co-host, Mr. Blake Gambino. What's up, man? How you doing? Man, feeling good, honestly. Uh, I liked, I enjoyed doing our first episode. We got a solid amount of views, you know. Not, we're not in the millions yet, but we're going to get there. I know it. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Before we get started, we're going to go ahead and get the um, the promo out there for our for our people at Fantasy Six Pack. Go ahead and subscribe to them on YouTube. Become an all-access member of Fantasy Six Pack to get access to our award-winning rankings, draft sheet sheets, DFS projections, betting tools, and all the other great content that they do. Best of all, you get access to us directly on our Discord where you can get custom advice for your leagues. Go to fantasy6pack.net slash plans to sign up today. All right, man. Well, let's get into it. What are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? That was a good question. Let's start with the Saints. I mean, we're Saints fans. Um, you were a little, you were a little buzzing after the uh, the defensive tackle pick, but um, I was just happy we didn't trade up and do any two firsts for anybody. You know, I mean, there was a few yeah. guys I would definitely wanted, but to jump up, to jump up that high, you know. Like we've been doing and giving away our first round. I mean, look at who the Eagles got. The Eagles got Jalen Carter, which we we predicted they would have a good draft. But that's an awesome draft if the guy it doesn't have any off the field issues, you know. So they picked Jalen Carter. I mean, imagine if we had that guy coming in, you know. Instead, we got. I mean, kind of a, we should, right? That's our pick. That's why we got to talk about it. We yeah, stole our so. pick. I guess they didn't steal it, but it <laughs> feels uh, like the theft guy. when they get the go to the Super Bowl and get uh, the guy we want, you know, so or a guy we would have wanted. So. Yeah. So I wasn't mad about the Brian Bercy pick. I wasn't happy about it. Uh, I don't know. It's just boring. That's just all it is. It's just boring. It's just like we all knew it was coming. I said it in the draft. I was like, we're probably going to pick some boring team tackle, some defensive end, something like that. Uh, of course we did. Uh, we actually, I think you actually sent me a mock draft one time a few weeks ago before this, and it said we were picking him. Mm-hmm. And you were like, proceed, question mark, question mark. I was like, no chance. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, of course, we should have done right there. That's who we were going to pick. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was looking out. They were talking about us wanting Nolan Smith, who the Eagles then picked right after us. Mm-hmm. So, that just short up their draft even more. But then, I, you know, I did some reading, some research. Apparently, you know, Nolan Smith wouldn't have fit in our off- our defensive scheme. So, yeah. you know, you got to think about that. Fourth, as well. uh, three, four linebacker is what they were saying. That's what he projects to be. So, which I don't yeah. think Eagles are running a four, a three, four. But at the same time, you know, yeah. they're doing what yeah, they they're, want to do over there. They're going to they're gonna turn him into what they want. So, yeah. Yeah, I kind uh, of likened him to a Michael Parsons character. So I'm thinking, like, the you know, Cowboys aren't running the 3 4. Like, let's just blitz this dude. I just want somebody to, to hit the quarterback, you know, because that's for the Saints. It always seems like the hardest thing is getting pressure. I feel like every opposing quarterback is sitting back there for 10 seconds just waiting to tear us apart, you know? So, right. No, I mean, yeah. If you have Aaron Donald ready to go for your team, you change your defense to fit this person. So, I mean, um, no one's been had a bunch of injury questions too. So hopefully, hopefully we, like you said, we didn't trade up for, you know, trade two first round picks for this injury prone guy that they're saying, uh, like you said, has a lot of upside. It's just, he's got to stay healthy, which isn't something that the saints usually do. So <laughs> that's a big, we'll see here. I mean, uh, they've got him being able to, to play every position on the line too. So he doesn't just have to play D tackle or nose or uh, nose or three technique. You know, he can play out on the edges because he's a pass right. rushing defensive tackle, you know. So, and they were saying he was the number one recruit in the nation uh, coming into college when he came to Clemson. Oh, he, yeah. uh, have you seen his high school tape? Yeah, dude, he was he was a monster. <laughs> he looks exactly the I mean, same. So he's been yeah. this big for so long. So he was doing right. that in high school. Yeah. So he's I got. Think he at was least... an All American his freshman year too. So like he was good. He just and then he got hurt. And he tore his ACL and then he came back and hurt his shoulder or something. And then last year he had like a lacerated kidney. So it was mm. it's like the Christian McCaffrey thing. Like they're all he got hurt a bunch every every year, but he never like was something that you should be worried about where it's continuous you know it's not like his knee is always hurting where it's every year his knee's hurting or you know his shoulder's always hurting it's something different every year so hopefully you know we can get some luck in that department for once sure would be nice to tell you what about a uh, second round pick from Foskey what do you think about him Isaiah Foskey so I actually when we picked him I didn't know who he was uh, at all I've never heard of him I'm not really a you know Notre Dame fan so uh, when I went and looked at him though he's a freak huh? I mean he's big he's tall he's fast um, he, he was great in college. Um, a lot of production. Yeah, we just got to see if he can develop into that uh, D 
DN. I don't like that comparison that they're saying Davenport, but really <laughs> Davenport was kind of a freak. He just kept getting hurt all the time, right? I mean, he was a mm-hmm. big, strong guy. I mean, they showed their um, like their combine grade sheet, and like it was identical to Davenport's. Dude, it was crazy yeah, how close yeah. everything was. They were the same height, same weight, same amount of reps, same forty, same vertical, same uh, broad jump. I was just like, oh my gosh, like. <laughs> And that was the thing. We talked ourselves into Davenport after the Daven after the, the, the two well, first to get up and get them. But it's it's yeah, like, we had to. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine get, if we you... traded two first to get Breesy, you know, or, or Bressy, or however yeah. you say his name. And you I know, think we were like... looking to trade up in the first. We just didn't have to, I think. So, I mean, we probably were going to, knowing the Saints. Yeah. And then not to, not to even mention two firsts, Davenport, that's the draft that Lamar Jackson wins. So when we traded those two first round picks, I was like, gosh, uh, we're picking Lamar Jackson. And then... <laughs> Davenport. So let's just hope that doesn't that doesn't come out of that either. Yeah, I mean we had our Davenport now, so we can have somebody better. What did you think right. about um, this running back though? Because I think we both wanted the two lane running back, and he had some injury concerns maybe coming out of the combine that we didn't know about until draft day. What'd you think right, about it's easy Miller? To, it's, it's easy to you know hate on the pick because you know like you said we wanted that we wanted Tajay Spears. He's from our hometown, well my hometown of Ponchula. Um, but, you know, injury concerns, uh, the Saints, like I said, we keep saying we have enough of those. So maybe it was just meant to be where he would, would go somewhere else. This Miller guy, once I did a little bit of research on him, he was pretty nice as well. I mean, he 1,400 yards last year, 17 touchdowns. Um, he was the starting running back for the team that went to the National Championship. I mean, they lost to a way better team, but, I mean, that's still uh, still an accomplishment. He, he balled out this year. Uh, he was definitely I'm, a guy who jumped off the, the screen last year, but other than when they were playing Georgia, but yeah. Right. Alan Kamara, I think I don't think he played in the playoffs. I think he got hurt. That's what I was looking at. I don't think he played at all. Uh, he might have played the first right game that, and not played the second game. I'm not, I'm not sure. But, you know, Alan Kamara with the suspension looming and Jamal Williams is, you know, 28. Who else do we have after that, you know? I mean, so it seems like a good pick. What do you think? Uh, I definitely liked his – I definitely liked his tape and watching him run – um, it's kind of like a guy we've been needing, you know, like we've been getting away from the screens, even though we have Kamara. I think this guy's got d- better hands than Spears, which is who we wanted at that pick. And, yeah. um, you know, we're going to be able to run some more screens. That was kind of like our bread and butter for a while. I mean, Drew Brees partly made it what it was, but I still think, um, you know, Derek Carr can throw a screen. I mean, it's just a, just a two yard pass, you know, <laughs> hopefully, right. but we'll see. Um, I definitely, um, I think he was one of the guys who tweeted after or during that he was super excited to come down and get to work, you know. So uh, you like to see a guy who looks hungry to come to your city. So that was good to see. Actually, uh, him. speaking of him and Foskey, Foskey was really excited. I was reading something about it. He was, like, praying. He was, like, telling all his friends, like, he wanted to come to Orleans. So, like, he manifested coming to Orleans. So you can't uh, you can't hate on stuff like that when you see people, like, already already getting into it because you know how the Saints fans are. They – they go crazy for the Saints, especially if you go crazy for us. So I just wish those like guys would say like the the little quarter the quarterback who drafted from Fresno, he Fresno State. He was like, uh, you know, he said go Saints or something. And I want to be like, it's who that dude. You say who that say who that in the chant in the chat right now. If you're watching in the comments, let us know you're there. If you're a Saints fan, say who that. We want to know who's watching. All right. Uh, uh, I think that's the the funny part. I actually followed Foskey on uh, Twitter too. So yeah, I do too now. Uh, he was he said so, I think he's the one that said go Saints, and then right. Cam Jordan said something like it was like, hey, no, it's who that, uh, right. <laughs> <and> <laughs> who that nation, dude. And Come then he on. tried to say New Orleans. You know how all these no uh, these people that aren't from here they say New Orleans or something like. He was like, yeah. I think I got it, and he tweeted like New no Orleans and then L I N S. So he's like, okay, uh-huh. I, know I did say that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. Though. That's- Y'all see people interacting with the uh, fan base you know because we're we're the type of people who are gonna want to get riled up and and we want to lift these guys up when they're playing amazing especially you know we want to say they're we're gonna say he's the greatest dn pick of all time if he plays well you know so we want that i think oh that was one thing i forgot to mention too is we were i think we were gonna pick that clemson defender that the Bengals got right before uh, we, uh, miles murphy yeah right before we got breezy I think they were saying that the Saints were interested in two guys going into the Bengals pick, so they were like happy with either one. So I think you're right. I think Miles Murphy was going to be the pick, and then Brissy was the backup. So I think you know they were happy with either one. But 
from all that I'm seeing, you know, that the Saints, the Saints in this draft, they went with needs. You know, they didn't go for the flashy picks. They went for everybody that they needed. They needed a defensive tackle. They got that. Cam Jordan's getting a little old. We just lost Davenport, like you said. So we needed a defensive end, got Foskey. Uh, you know, the running back situation, we definitely needed a running back, got that. Uh, then brings us to our next pick here. We got that um, offensive. We traded up to the first pick in the fourth round to get this Nick Saldaviri offensive tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't six six three hundred eighteen pounds. I mean, that's pretty huge of a person. I haven't really, you know, I don't watch Old Dominion football, so <laughs> do you know anything about this guy? Or? Well, I think what we like, which is what we usually like about these type of players, is that he can play more than one position on the offensive line. So, because you know how it is for us, we're going to have the tackle go down or the guard or the center. So, like, if the center goes down, we'll move this, the guard to center, and then we'll put a different guy at guard, you know. So, we like these guys who are versatile. And, I mean, would you say 6'6", six, 3-something? Six, I mean, that's a run a blocker boy. right there. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a run mauler. So, I like to see that. Um, and I, we still I have pinning, you know. Go ahead. Sorry, yeah, we still yeah. have pinning. So, I mean... We don't know if he's going to finally kick out to tackle or if we might put him at uh, guard because we got Ruiz who hasn't played amazing, but it's been, you know, he's been in there and playing well as well as he can. And, uh, but we declined his fifth year option. So I think that was another reason we knew we were declining his option for this year or for next year. And so that's why we went, like you said, we went with need and went and got a, uh, another guy similar that can play all the positions and move around. Because I think Ruiz was a center in college, but we're playing him at guard. So we like these guys who can touch on multiple positions. Yeah, I think the whole uh, – no, it's not taking fifth-year option for Ruiz, which is kind of like a money thing. I think we're still going to sign him to a contract. Uh, yeah. he, he he played pretty bad his first year, but last year he was picking up. So I think he'll develop into something nice. Um, but like you said, this this Nick guy, he's um, – he, I followed all these guys on Twitter that we picked. So he was also saying, he was like, I, I play, I play offensive line. I don't play like a specific position. He's like, I want to play wherever they need me. So that's, that's going to be helpful. Cause you know, like I said, we're very injury prone. So you never know where the saints are going to be able to, uh, who are they going to keep healthy. And then moving on along same round. We also traded up again. We picked a quarterback this time from Fresno state, Jake Hayner. Um, I like him already, dude. He's talking about Drew Brees. You know, whenever you bring up the goat, you got to – he wears yeah. up for Drew. He liked that. That was cool. Uh, he played pretty decently. I mean, he's uh, – all all the things I've read on him is, is nice. I mean, all the things I've seen, he he he's a learner. He'll uh, – I mean, we have Derek Carr for contract for four years, so he, he can sit behind Carr and, you know, maybe one day be able to start for us. Uh, what do you think? Well, we've picked some guys in these later rounds, some quarterbacks in the last few years, and we've talked our, you know, we talked ourselves into Ian Book, you know. So <laughs> I that. think uh, it is cool that he went to Fresno State. I actually saw some pictures of him hanging out on the sideline with Derek Carr for a game last year. So it's cool because uh, Derek Carr went to Fresno State too. So hopefully they can bond over that, bond over living in uh, New Orleans now because it's a different city than most cities. And, uh, yeah, like you're saying – we just want to see a guy who can develop, you know. I think that's been where we've been at lately. We've been picking guys, and they don't they don't seem to get in. If this is a Madden rating, he's a 65 this year. He's a 65 the next year. He's a 65. You know, like I want to see a guy move up in the rankings, and uh, you know, gain some knowledge of the offense because they they try to talk like our offense is something serious, you know. So I mean, let's see these yep. guys go out here and control the off. That was one thing. Look, just looking back on Drew Brees's highlights and stuff sometimes like he just that was kind of the difference between him and Winston too is he really has full control at, at some points he's waving Sean Payton off in those days and being like look I'm, I'm calling this play you know so I think that was something we we took we take for granted now <laughs> we're kind of missing we're like gosh yeah. like I just wish look, we have somebody could take over and like we could feel safe in their hands so we'll see with Derek Carr you know but <laughs> I don't mind having this dude he's third string too right because we still have Winston so I don't, I don't yeah, hate this. I don't. I don't hate to pick either. I mean, like it's the project. I mean, it's kind of early for a project, fourth round. But hey, if uh, they like him, they like him. I think uh, Stetson Bennett went in the fourth round. I don't think he's a very good at quarterback. He went right. I think so. he went the very next pick. I, I yeah. was kind of feeling like we sniped the uh, the Rams. I think they might have wanted him. I don't know. So because I don't know, Stetson Bennett. I think he was a product of having the best defense in probably a long, long time. So that's why he won a couple. But we won't. Let's either neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the fifth round, we, we selected a safety out of Minnesota, Jordan Howden. I don't really know much about him, to be honest with you. 
Um, yeah, I, I didn't actually see that pick either, so I didn't get to see any tape on him. Um, either. But, but hopefully he's a depth player, this. can play yeah. special teams, you know, so. We're always going to – I feel like any draft that we have with the Saints, we're going to pick a safety, at least one. Uh, a safety, some kind of cornerback that can play safety as well. I think that's um, why I had us picking in our mock. Um, I think that's why I had us picking Brian Branch. You know, but he fell a lot too, so I was wondering he might yeah, have had some did. medical issues too. That's one thing we can't foresee when we're doing a mock. You know, we're picking guys based on what we can read on the internet and what we've seen right. at like pro days and stuff. And no one saying, no one's ever going to say somebody's injured like in public like that because then their, their draft stock's going to fall. You know, so that was kind of the one hard part about that. There's a lot of people that fell that I didn't think we were going to like into the second round. I mean, our, sorry for our listeners that just actually came for our first episode. Our mock drive was horrible. Uh, I think we got the very <laughs> first pick right. I don't think we got many, many. I don't think we got any after that, actually. So it was a lot of going up and down. But um, last but not least, to round out uh, a player that I actually wanted. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised that he fell to like, I think it was the sixth round. Yeah. Uh, AT, AT Perry's a big, tall guy. Uh, yeah, Wake Forest. I, he he his tape looked nice too. I mean, for having the Wake Forest quarterback, he's yeah. making contested I, catches and stuff. So the Saints are good at picking those receivers late that actually kind of evolve. So I mean, I, I mean, Marcus Colson was a seventh rounder out of some no name school, Hofstra. Uh, At Perry's a big tall guy uh, that a lot of people slept on for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Uh, he's I, well, he's like six four. Uh, yeah, that I, I wanted to say actually, he's like a Marcus Colson type. I think he's a little faster and a little shorter, but I mean, no one they had uh Colston pegged as a tight end when he came out, you know, so yeah, it's cool to see I mean, that we got a guy who's actually a wide receiver <laughs> and then we don't have to rush him along, really. I mean, uh, Chris Olave is our is our is our beast going forward. Michael Thomas is going to play to start out. No, we don't know how long it's going to last, but he will play. Uh, Rashad Raheed Shahid is gonna play, he's a beast. So, I mean, we got some options out there for now. And we, we picked hoping- up that other guy too from um, Tina from uh, the Raiders. Oh, we got Brian Edwards, yeah, yeah, yeah we got Brian, Brian Edwards. Edwards, another he tall really guy. Worked out. right? But you know, it could happen. Yeah. It, it just takes one team for these players to just, just you know, evolve into take it to the next step. And maybe we're, the, we're that team for Brian. Edwards. Well, he was but- in uh. Las Vegas with Carr too, so he might have a little bit right. of rapport there to just be able to um, bring. They can bring each other along in in New Orleans, which would be cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, I was hoping that we'd come away with a tight end. Uh, we did not, so it's just we traded. We actually traded a tight end to get At Perry. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Um, yeah, <laughs> we, we got uh, we got rid of Trout Man. Uh, thank God, you know that wasn't an experiment that we liked. Uh, so Twitter was the, very happy with that. No, yeah. I don't. No offense to yeah. Trapman as a person, but like we, right. we never really. He never never worked out. You know, looking we back at like that whole picks. draft, what was that like the 2018 draft? Yeah, it was horrible. Like, it was a bad, was a terrible draft. Yeah, Nicky so. Loomis is up and down, man. He either has like a 2000, you know, the draft that Camaro was in, mm-hmm. or he has what he had in that year. So I it just it's up and down. I think we will still sign somebody though. I think I mean we can't go into the season with Juwan Johnson and. Taysom Hill is our only two constant uh, tight ends, right? I mean, we gotta. I feel like we're gonna make some kind of move to get somebody. Yeah, I really agree because John Johnson's not like your studliest blocker as a tight end. He's a great receiver. I actually yeah. had him on my fantasy team last year. Picked him up out of free agency, and he was really when he wasn't hurt, 10, 12 points a game. Which when you don't have, you know, um, Kelsey or Andrews, that's pretty solid to have a ten or twelve point guy. You know, he. I think he ended up in the in our league having like. He was number eight overall or something. Yeah. Maybe six overall, you know. So the tight end position is so weak that I mean if you just score a couple of touchdowns, you're gonna be in the top ten. So oh, for sure. outside of that top five or six guys, it's just He's, not really I a, like him as a going on there. A receiver, but is his blocking is in question. That's kinda of why we kept Troutman around was for us blocking too, is yeah. from what I've heard. So it would be interesting. That was actually something he said on uh, an interview is that we weren't allowing him to to reach his potential or something. And I don't know. I feel like all Saints fans were like, dude, we've seen your potential. And yeah, it's, how about it's all the Trump out. passes and <laughs> we kind of get over it. Yeah, we got you got to get over and throwing you the ball, man. I mean, yeah, it gets it gets tiring. Just but, not you know, a we very talk- quick guy, you know. That's right. Not no, breaking I, I, out of his breaks, making a catch and turning up field. It was always like he caught it and was just like immediately being tackled, you know. It's just like yeah, I mean, or we, we can find yeah, anybody to do that. Times. True. Awesome. And of course, he goes. He goes to the man who drafted him. Though I mean, he goes to Sean Payton over there to, with the Broncos. So you know, I wish the best for him. Hopefully, he go has some success over there with uh, with Let's Ride. So uh, with Russ, so let's go yeah. ahead. 
let's go ahead and move on from the Saints. We got that out the way. You know, we got to talk about them a little bit. Uh, what about the draft and hole, man? Who's some uh, Who's some of those people that you liked? Like, give me give me like three guys that you liked in the team they went to. All right. Well, I know we'll disagree on this. A couple, uh, maybe not on all of these, but um, first and foremost, uh, a really good spot I liked was Devin Achain or Achaney, however you say his name, from Texas A&M. Um, just a speedster, um, you know, a guy who's really going to get around the edge and um, get downfield. They got uh, Mostert, but a guy who's been injured a lot. So I don't think for this, I don't, I, I do think this guy can see the field pretty early. And I mean, he's 5'9", so he's not, he was never going to be a workhorse guy anyway. So this is one of your later round uh, flex running backs, I would say. Um, another one. I mean, I'm not going to name I'm, I'll let you have the tight ends or something. But Zay Flowers, of course, um, I was hoping he would be the first uh, wide receiver off the board. I really liked his tape. He reminded me of like a Tyreek Hill, but not just a step really? slower. Nice. Yeah. Great vertical. Catch the catch point. You know, he's catching the ball at the top of the um, upwards. Yeah, yeah, I like that. that too. I like that. And uh, from what we've seen, they finally signed um, they finally signed Lamar Jackson. And from what we've seen, really, Lamar Jackson's best throws are really his deep throws. Um, so yeah, if we're going to have a guy going deep, and that that's the thing about Flowers that I kept saying when I thought we might get him, is he can play all around the – he can play all every position, you know, X, Z. So we can play slot. He can play on the outsides. Um, I'm sure he's going to be doing a lot of those end arounds that they like to do out there. And um, this is – I'll come here to the one now. I mean, I can mention Jameer Gibbs. I thought they drafted him way too high, but – I mean, I think he's he's going to have a lot of um, – just so you can he's, see what they did la- – the Lions did last year with running the ball, you know, so. He's one of those guys that I liked. I didn't like the pick at the time. I mean, they went up to like 13 to pick him. 11, um, yeah. Yeah, but then when they traded Swift, then it became like, okay, well, wow, right. who, else, who else is there now? You know what I mean? Who else – they lost Jamal Williams. They lost uh, – then now they lost Swift, who – they have, he's he's their only guy now. I mean, I, I don't know who else they picked, but or if they picked up anybody. They got David Montgomery. I was gonna say they have Montgomery. So Montgomery's gonna play your Williams role. He's gonna have twenty right. touchdowns, hopefully, you know, according to them. And then, um, and then Gibbs is gonna play your because they kind of run a Saints office up there. They have a lot of yeah. old Saints. I mean, they have Dan Campbell, yeah, yeah. So they're gonna want to run screens and they're gonna want want to run you know weird end arounds and stuff and like um, outside was, reads and stuff. So. Outside I was reading zone. today that they wanted they wanted to use him as a three down back. So I mean they they did just sign Monty though, and he's pretty good. He's young and good too. So I mean they gave Monty a lot of money as the crazy yeah. thing too. So, so like you said, team. that's why they had to have traded Swift. Like at, right. it, they're like we're going up and they're picking him and they're like, what are y'all doing? And then we kind of thought, well, they just signed Montgomery, so obviously it's Swift who's going to be out the door. And then of course he gets traded right to the Eagles. Who else? The Eagles who love Georgia players, dude. They they know what they're doing. That's like a – if I had to pick a college team right now, there'd, there'd be three options. It'd be Georgia, Alabama, and LSU. Like, those are the three teams. Or maybe – I'll add a four. They'll add Ohio State. Those those four schools put out just talent. And Georgia and – the, and the Bulldogs are just going – I mean, the the Philadelphia Bulldogs, what we'll call them, they're just going after these Georgia <laughs> guys. I mean, that, uh, DeAndre Swift is good. I mean, I, they, the Lions just didn't use them well. I think the Eagles will use them just fine. Uh, they don't. They don't have anybody either. They had Kenneth Gainwell and uh, Boston Scott. That's it, because you know Miles Sanders left. So I mean, he's gonna go there and be successful. Uh, just having like Gibbs for a few years on fantasy teams, um, definitely a good, a great player. But he does, he does have injury concerns. You know, he'll have a yeah. a, a knee Swift here knee. and an elbow there and a hip there. So that's kind of one yeah. of the things I think why they were wanting to get out of. Um, cause they're going to have to pay him soon too. That's kind of what all teams are thinking about recently is like, who are we going to have to pay this guy? You know, like, is this, you got to think that there's some, that was something going on. Cause, uh, he's a good player and they just weren't using him at all last year. They were deciding to use, you know, uh, Jamal Williams, who's not a bad guy, but is Jamal Williams is somebody that I'm going to be nervous about running the ball, you know? Uh, DeAndre Smith is somebody that was pretty good. I think he, you actually had him that year that I succeeded the championship to you, and I uh, came back and won. I think I think I think you might have had DeAndre Smith that year. So uh, sounds about I right. I just threw that little jab in there. Uh, <laughs> <I> felt it. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, some of the guys I like, I like um, Dalton Kincaid to the Bills. I mean, um, excellent pick. Yeah, he is. Uh, they were saying that he was one of the best. Uh, pass catchers in the draft just 
at all. Like not even just receivers mm-hmm. tight ends. He was one of the best pass catchers in the draft. Now he's going to the offense with the best quarter, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL that pass all the time. So hopefully he does he evolves into somebody. And they got Dawson Knox over there, but he's somebody that he can pass up. I mean, you know, the tight ends in their first year aren't always the best coming out of the college, but I mean he's somebody that could be good. I think you mocked the Bills picking a wide receiver, if I remember correctly, too. So, obviously, we were on the right track with, with them wanting yeah. to pass catcher. I know? think we did because, you know, they have digs and they don't have a – because I think Dalton Kincaid can play the slot, too. I think that's what they're going to use him as. I think they're going to they're gonna flex him out a bunch and just run sets with Dawson Knox and Kincaid Six, at the same four, time. 6'4", 246. So. Yeah, I mean, I think he was one of the faster – I think a lot of people comped him to uh, Kelsey. And no better right. comp to have, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I <laughs> I was hoping that, that he would fall to the Saints, uh, him or Mayer, because I like him too. But he ended up going a couple of picks before. I don't think we would have picked him anyway. Um, another guy I like is, you know, it's just an easy one to say. Uh, it's B. John Robinson. Obviously, he was the eighth pick in the draft. Uh, one of the best running back prospects, you know, of all time, really, is what they're saying. Uh, now he goes to a team that produced a, a thousand yard rusher and a fifth round pick Tyler Algier last year. Uh, so, I mean, you, can you imagine what, I mean, he's going to go for 2000, right? I mean, as a rookie. Hey, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't um, make that pick on the mock, but we did say we could see them picking them. So that was yeah. one thing for sure we were right about. And the, the Falcons went in Falcons. They went I think we didn't want to run it back already. Yeah, yeah I think right. We didn't want to believe that they were going to pick him because I didn't, because like I said, we just did our dynasty rookie draft and I've had the one one and I picked. You know, Bijan obviously is a fair pick. So I have now I have to like have a Falcons on my roster. So that, you know, that's never good. But mm-hmm. it is a good spot fantasy wise. Once I started thinking about it, I was like, man, they're, they're going to run a lot because, you know, they have Desmond Ritter, who's not the greatest. Uh, they do have two tall targets in London and Pitts. So it's, I don't think, I think it'll take a little pressure off of Bijan. So I think, I think he's going to have a monster rookie year. Let's, let's just hope he stays healthy and clean and, you know, we can actually see some good football because, you know, I mean, yeah, I think we both like I was I think we were texting on the side about this and I was kind of saying that I didn't think it was, you know, I mean, he's still the number one pick, I think, in most fantasy drafts, but I didn't yeah. think he was I don't think he's going to like I think you you said that he might be top 10 overall in running backs. Yeah, which I, I mean, part of me thinks that's because you're picking him at one. So you're like, <laughs> I hope he's going to be top 10, you know? So, but for me, I mean, they, they have Algier, who's a, who was a thousand yard rusher last year. They have Cordell Patterson. Um, they got a running quarterback. So if, if, if Redder starts sucking, teams are going to stack the box and it's going to be a lot tougher for him. Is he going to be able to get 20? I keep getting a phone call right now. I'm sorry. Is he going to be able to get all these all these uh, carries per game. Because, you know, for, for you to be top 10 for fantasy and as a running back, you're going to need 22 carries at least a game, you know? So I'm just – that was kind of my thought process. Is he going to get 22 carries a game when they have two other guys and a rookie quarter – or a first-year quarterback, you know? I think they could just slot out Corderell to the – back to us like a slot receiver, kind of H-back. So, I mean, that could – I don't think – I'm not really worried about him. And honestly, maybe Algier could spell Bijan, you know, just keep him healthy. He's a rookie. I'm maybe sure that's what their thought year. process was, yeah. I mean, you don't – you're not a – they're a bad team. And that's not just me being a Saints fan. The Falcons are not a good team. So – um to, have, to go ahead and have the eighth pick and pick a running back, you don't do that if you're not going to like run this dude into the ground. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the Giants, true. the Giants sucked that year that they picked uh, Saquon Barkley, but they did. And what happened the next year? He just ran all over everybody like they knew he was going to. And you know, you win games because of that. You win games because you have dominant production out of one player. Just like it, it's not basketball where you need you know a few. Well, actually, you know, basketball, you, one person can take over. Let's say you know it's fantasy it's like baseball, baseball you're saying right? Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> baseball like where you need you know you need everybody to play good. Football, if one if your running back is scoring 200 yards a game with two touchdowns, most of the time you're going to be in that game. I mean, mm. that's, let's just be real because they, they'll stop running the ball if they're losing. Uh, but we can talk about that all day, especially because you know I hate the Falcons. Uh, a quarter, let's just switch to quarterback. I like I like this uh, Hayden Hooker to the Lions thing, dude. I think um, I think the Lions are building something nice over there. I think they have. I mean, they have Amon Ra. They have Jameson Williams when he comes back. They got. Uh, DJ, no, they got rid of. They have uh, Marvin Jones back. Mm. They got. They just got Gibbs. I mean, their team, their defense is looking nice. They, I like they, the uh, tight end they picked up too. Laporta coming yeah, out he's, of tight end U over there in Iowa. Yeah, he's good. He and then, one of the top rated tight ends in the draft too. And they got him in the second he, round, I think. So right. And then Hinton Hooker's not going to have to play for a while. Jared Goff is not a bad quarterback, so he's going to be able to go back there. You know, learn from somebody who's been to the Super Bowl, who's been in the league for a few years. 
give him like a year or two and maybe, you know, give him the reins. I think the Lions are building something sweet over there, and I think Hidden Hooker is going to lead that eventually. I actually, I don't know. I picked, I picked Will Levis at the end of the draft over uh, Hendon Hooker, but it was because I think Will Levis probably will start sooner than later. So I, that's kind of my thinking it was. Well, there. for da- for uh, fantasy pur- for our dynasty purposes too, you're looking at. I, I didn't want to pick Hooker either because he's going to be 26 already. So yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to waste. A pick he is on a no offense, yeah. but yeah, like we're talking dynasty. I'd rather pick. You know, I picked Bryce Young in ours, so it's like I'm I'm trying to pick a young guy. Yeah, he's gonna be and on then, the team forever. <laughs> I also have hurt, so like it was kind of like a. This is I'm only picking this guy in case something stupid happens to hurt. High is, upside, you know. If Rogers ends up exactly. being a beast, and you're like, oh man, I got a trade piece or something, you know. So yeah, right. I understood that pick when you made it. Plus, looking at the that was closer to the end of the third round. Yeah, it was like the draft. Who else is available? Players. You know, right? So. Him or Hooker? That's what I was deciding. Him and Hooker, or, or a guy that I ended up picking up after drafting it anyway. So. um We'll talk about that in a minute, though. Let's go to let's go to bad picks. So, what are, I, I I have a lot of bad picks. Let's just start off by saying this uh this draft for fantasy wise was ridiculous. I think I think this was one of the worst outcomes for a lot of the rookies that were coming in uh, for the teams they went to. I think it was just just I hated it. Uh, I, I don't like I don't hate the guys and I, some of these guys that we're going to talk about. I think they are are good players, and they the team wise, it's a good pick. You know what I mean? Like, let's start off with Charbonnet. Like, I think Charbonnet was going to be a good guy. I think he was going to be really nice, but now he's going over to uh, the Seahawks, who already had Kenneth Walker, who was, was pretty good. So now he, for, as a team, they're going to both play a bunch. So mm. they're going to stay healthy. They're going to go forward. But for fantasy wise, these are just just killers. You know what I mean? Kenneth Walker lost a ton of value. Charbonnet lost a ton of value. Um, yeah. It just hurts to see. Uh, Jackson Smith and Ning Jingba, and he went to the City Hawks as well. I'm sure that's a great pick for their team. You know, he's right. gonna, <laughs> they have Metcalf, Lockett now, and Jingba playing the slot. I mean, that's just going to be disgusting. I think we talked Famous about that in the mock, right? That yeah, uh, they might because of uh, the other guy. He's he's not getting old. Yeah, but he's the oldest. Lockett is the oldest of right. the receivers. So, so I'm sure Lockett is going to take the biggest hit here. But you know, Metcalf isn't going to get as many looks now because you have a Ning Jingba who is. Really good. I mean, he was the best receiver in the class. I mean, I think the Seahawks had a top three draft. They mm-hmm. picked the best cornerback, the best receiver. They got a good. They got one of the best running backs. They got a really good group of people. But just fantasy wise, it's just a killer. Um, yeah, I don't disagree with that for sure. Now I know you wanted to talk about Quentin Johnson. Um, I kind of feel like it was a good pick for him, um, oh, but I, I, I kind of. Okay. You got me. Go ahead. I'll Are go you ahead in? <laughs> yeah. I was having technical yeah. difficulties too. Somebody was calling me like five times in a row. Okay, so um, for Quentin Johnson, though, I think you were kind of saying just based on where he's going for this next year coming, it's not the best pick. But I can't be – if I was Quentin Johnson, I couldn't hate going to have Justin Abert thrown to me. I mean, Herbert thrown to me, you know. So, right. um, and I guess, you know, uh, Keenan Allen's only 30, but he's definitely had injury history like he's 35, so – We'll right. see what Quentin Johnson does. Same with uh, Mike Williams, who I've had since his rookie year. I've had him on my team, on most of my fantasy teams every year, just because they picked him early and he was huge and fast, and I thought he was going to be just a stud. I mean, he's he's been great. He definitely makes contested catches, which is nice. But another guy who gets injured a lot. Um, so yeah, that's so kind of the thing. Well, we're talking about the, like like you have in that little the header right there. These aren't like bad players. Like I don't think these teams made bad picks. I think destination wise, like you're saying, these are crippling for fantasy like i think quint johnson could have had like a good you know what if he was a receiver two somewhere that would have been nice mm. i mean he's starting this year no matter what was wide receiver three um but you know i mean keenan allen's kind of injury prone that could that could turn out nice i i, I don't think i think quint johnson's main kryptonite is going to be how he catches the ball i think he makes a lot of drops uh he's not sure-handed definitely so looks like never... a chess catcher you know he's trying to yeah. go like this chess catcher yeah he's just fast <laughs> and tall so you know it works out for him um so, you know, as I'm talking about these guys, don't think that I'm talking bad about them or they're going to have bad careers. I think they just went to fantasy-wise bad places. Um, talking about, you know, back to the Ponchula kid, Tajay Spears, uh, two-lane guy. Uh, I wanted to go to the Saints, obviously. I know there's some health conditions going there, but his landing spot, I'm sure he's excited. I've seen – I actually have him on Facebook. He's pumped. But, you know, I wouldn't pick him in fantasy right now. He's going behind Derrick Henry. I mean, you don't <laughs> – I don't care who you are, what round they picked him in. They're going to get the ball to Derrick Henry 30 times a game. I mean, that's just how it's going to be. Yeah, he's uh, handcuffed status, basically, right? Right. So. He, he's only there if Henry gets hurt. But, you know, Henry's getting older. Um, 
There were some trade rumors for Henry too, uh, Sterling yeah, before the draft was. that he might get moved. They they said he might go to the Eagles or something. And we're just like, oh, the rich yeah, get richer. Like, oh, I yeah, know I don't know what it is how he's doing over there, dude. He's just <laughs> he's got the inabella to chokehold. It's so funny because uh, a few years ago, I felt like Marlon hated the guy and wanted him dude, fired. I know he was <laughs> like fire Howie. I know now yeah. he's like Howie's the god. Yeah. <laughs> He is, is though, like he's killing it. I mean, we all we do that with Mickey Loomis though. Mickey Loomis, you know, will swing the cap like it's his uh like it's a light baseball bat. But now he's uh he's either hit or mess in the draft though, so you never know. And we always lose a lot of good value with people by not treating them. We kind of just let them go. But that's like I said, that's another here or there situation. Um, what you got? Well, some players you don't like. Well, I mean, I don't want to say like any specific. Anybody specifically is in a terrible positioning, like you're saying. I've actually lost my place where I was. But there was one Green Bay wide receiver. I don't have his name on here now. Um, Rasheem. I think I know who you're talking about. I'm about to pull up the draft. I should have had it written down. That's my bad. But um, Or Jaden Reed. Is that his name? Rasheed Rashi Rice. No, she Rice went to the uh, Kansas Jayden City. Reed. Yeah, Jayden Jayden Reed. Reed. Yeah, right. yeah, I yeah, think, right. yeah, I was just making sure. So for me, um, we just don't know. Like, I, I like this guy coming out of college. We just don't know, really, um, what Jordan Love's going to be. And actually, they just picked up his fifth-year option. Uh, so they, they must be liking what they're seeing in practice, you know. But um, as for me, if I'm – if I'm uh, – if I was if if I was thinking he was going to be wide receiver eight as a rookie, I'm kind of thinking he's wide receiver twelve now or something. You know, like yeah. I don't know. They don't have a lot of production over there, but also we did, from what we've seen from Jordan Love, it hasn't been he he's not Mahomes. You know, he didn't come out and just start just start lighting up the league. You know, so right. that would be one another guy. Um, I think I was kind of bummed about um, the I still drafted him in our dynasty league. The uh, the big tight end from Georgia. Washington. Washington, yeah, he slid I think, a lot too. Yeah, he did. I think there were some injury concerns with him that we didn't know about as well. But I mean, when you see his tape and you saw his combine and stuff, he looked really awesome. But they already have um, the other tight end over there that they drafted yeah. last year. Uh, uh, you're talking about the Steelers, um, Pat Fryermuth. Yeah, Fryermuth. Okay, so he's already tight end two already off the jump. Yeah. So it's not like he became a starter, dude. I think the reason uh, that a lot of people were down on him, uh, Washington, was because he's not even the best setting on the team when he was there. This dude Bowers that's coming out, I think next year maybe for Georgia is a dog. Like I think he's going to be a top ten pick next year. Uh, so I mean, he kind of got overshadowed. I mean, but the reason Darnell Washington is getting drafted as high as he was or projected, I mean, he's six seven, two hundred and sixty five pounds. I mean. Yeah, from what they said about him is he's going to play on the line a lot. So he's going to be a blocker, and there's no yeah. fantasy value in pancakes. Right, right. So, so, yeah. Right. I was okay, kind of hoping so. a team would pick him and, you know, make him their Gronk or something, you know. Right, you can, one right. can hope. Because Gronk awesome, was a great yeah. blocker, and he was a great receiver, you know. So it was right. kind of like that, you would hope. But that's why I would say destination-wise, not my favorite pick. Yeah, for sure. Well, leading into it, let's just uh, let's talk about our draft. So we're both in this league – uh, it's actually my league. Me and Mar- our buddy Marlon were the commissioners. Um, we started this league about four or five years ago, I think. This is going to be our fifth year coming up. This will be our fifth year. Um, damn, that's a long time. That's I think you won twice and Marlon won twice, huh? No, I won once, twice. Steven won once and Marlon won once. And yeah, we're going into our fifth season. So we're going into our fifth okay, year. Ends up, yes. um, I ended up trading a few things. I traded Godwin and Mixon for the 1-1. Uh, so I ended up with that pick. Uh, I just did a trade right before the draft with Connor. You know, he's going to, he's going to get giddy that we're talking about him in the draft. I mean, in the podcast, uh, I traded, I traded, I had a, you know, I had Kamara and Javante Williams. So my team was looking a little thin. So I traded Jamar Chase, which, you know, kills me. I'm a big LSU fan. I hate that. I traded Jamar Chase and AJ Dillon and I got JK Dobbins, DK Metcalf, Khalil Herbert and 1.6 in the draft. So I got that's how I got the sixth pick, and then I think the ninth was just my regular pick. He, so, that's kind of a similar trade he was wanting me to do. Remember, I was talking about him wanting yeah. to trade for Chubb. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just I had to weigh my options at that point. I was like, my team looks much better now after the draft and after mm-hmm. that trade than it would have, you know, because you know Kamara's not going to be in my starting lineup, and neither is Javante Williams when the season starts. You know, they're both probably going to miss week week one or however long. So it was like I pretty much had to do what I had to do to make that trade happen. Yeah, uh, it sucks. So you know, you never want to trade Jamar Chase. I mean, 
he's my boy. You know, it, it sucks to even talk about. I don't. I'm gonna get. I think get, this is something we mentioned too. Is that you won, and then you had like three first round picks or something. Yeah, I yeah, could, barely could. missed the playoffs, <laughs> and my first pick was two seven in the round. You know, so that's because you traded your first round pick for like some craziness last year. I think a year before so, is how I got Mixon. So for you yeah. to have Mixon and then trade him in another deal to get one yeah. one, and it's just like, man, I was really crapping the bed over here. So yeah. So with my one one, I went ahead and picked Bijan. It's easy pick. There was nobody else. Then Sev threw a curveball. I thought Gibbs was the next pick easily, and he picked Quentin Johnson. Mm. Uh, which he picked a lot of receivers. I don't know if he felt yeah, he good at running back. Crazy with it. Uh, then, you know, Jameer Gibbs went, and then Jordan Addison was the next receiver off, and then Zay Flowers. Then my sixth pick came up, and I picked Dalton Kincaid. Uh, I do have Waller, so it's easy to, you know, until Dalton Kincaid gets on in there, I'll just keep starting Waller. Uh, but, you know, I think, like I said, I think Kincaid's going to be a beast. So mm-hmm. so then, you know, Jackson's been thinking Jigbo went, which I think was a steal uh, that late at seven, and then Charbonnet. And then my ninth pick, I picked Devon A. Chain. I would like the. I think that's how you say his last name. Yeah, the Miami guy I talked about. Yeah, yeah. I think he's gonna. Dude, he's he's a fan. He was a running back. I was hoping would slip a little. Nate, I don't think he was gonna get to two seven, but I was gonna try to trade up into two one or two two if he was still there. Yeah. But then um, he's another guy that I didn't like where he went. Tank Bigsby. I thought he was gonna be a good guy. He went to Jacksonville. So like it's like man, now he's behind ETN. That, that's another just another guy. It's just like man. Why, why are you drafting this guy? Like, what, you're ruining his draft status. I mean, he's never going to – you're not going to start over, you know, ETN. I think he went in the third round. So, it's not like he uh, – That could be know, one where up. you say ETN got hurt as well because a lot of teams yeah. want to do these handcuffs 50-50 and, like, take wear yeah. and tear. Because the one thing true. about a running back is they take a lot of wear and tear. So, I think uh, – that was kind of one of the reasons we bought back Ingram last year. You know, we were like, we need somebody to – so because we were running Kamara like 25 times a game of, of the year before. Yeah. Wearing him down, you know. Some guys just aren't built to be a workhorse. I think that's what made Bajan Robinson the overall number. I mean, a lot of guys had him rated as like their third overall prospect in the whole draft, not even for just running backs or offensive players. And yeah, that was because so he's built to take the ball like, like Derrick Henry, just to run the ball yeah. every time. So, yeah. And then, you know, I finished my draft out with Will Levis at 3 9. Um, it was either him or Hooker, like I said, or A.T. Perry. I actually almost picked him as well. Yeah, I actually saw he didn't get drafted, or he got He did, last pick of the draft. Right, yeah. I was thinking so I then, was going to trade back in for that. So that was it for me. I got those four guys. Uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, my starting lineup, as of right now, looking like it's going to be, uh, like, you know, if if there was no injuries or, uh, you know, looming suspensions coming up, this is I would start out with, uh, let's see, Jalen Hurts. I mean, Alvin Kamara, Javante Williams, J.K. Dobbins. Then I got Jefferson, uh, D.K. Metcalf, Michael Pittman, and Darren Waller. I mean, that's just, that's just it. And then I got P. Ryan on the bench for whenever Javante's not playing. I got Herbert on the bench, A-Chain, and all of them down there. So my lineup's not looking too bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, that definitely you, – you retooled. I, I think I said that in our draft. Uh, I'm like, man, y'all wonder why Eric wins. Like, he, he just won, and now he has four first-round – or, you know, four top picks – and he's just resetting these dudes. And in that league, we're not doing any type of keeper status where you have to give up anything. It's only rookie right. draft every year. It's full well, it's a dynasty. dynasty. It's a, yeah, yeah it's so a you're not even having to pay it. A lot of dynasties, though, they have contracts and stuff, you know, so they pay for a guy to, to stay right. on their team. You're just going to have Bijan Robinson yeah. for the rest of your life until you decide <laughs> to trade him or something, you know? And I, thought, like, I thought that would – hey, I thought that would chase, <laughs> and he's not on my team anymore, so you never you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, so, so I, I definitely was – I was surprised about that. Um, All right. Tell me about your draft and tell me about your team. A good guy to trade him to, though, because, you know, Connor, he's like us. He would have wanted him. He I wanted him. Shit, you know. <laughs> um, let me pull it up right here. I know I picked uh, Bryce Young with my first pick, though. Didn't really need a quarterback. I only had I only have Deshaun Watson on the roster. but No, nah, you needed one. I kind of couldn't. I kind of couldn't pass up, especially because you never know when we'll go to a two quarterback league. It, it's it's looming at all times, you know. So I couldn't hey, pass up there, you know? the number one overall quarterback. Um, there was a couple of running backs. Um, I think like the backup for Cincy. Um, a couple other. I mean, and I do need running backs, but I, I was just I thought about it as, as in the sense of. You know, Watson could have another case come down at any moment. And Bryce yeah. Young was the yeah. first overall pick. So I just got the number one overall pick at 2-7 in a rookie draft. No, you know, a- I think last year or the year before, maybe, whenever Lawrence came out, he went, like, first or second. You know, no, uh, and most of the mock drafts that I was doing, C.J. Stroud 
uh, Bryce Young and Anthony Richardson all went in the first like five, six picks. I mean, that you definitely got a steal there. Yeah, so I, I didn't hate that. Um, then I picked uh, Abinaconda. I'm not positive how you say, say his that name. name. Israel Ab- Abinaconda. Um, I, my pick with him was that, um, you know, Brees Hall is still coming off of his injury, and then Michael Carter's the backup, who had played decently, but um, they spent some draft capital on this dude. So I'm thinking he's already kind of second string, basically. Um, so I didn't hate that pick. Um Plus, if I'm ever, if you know, I was at the time talking with Connor about trades, you know, I'm like, maybe I'll get Brees Hall and then I'll have his handcuff, you know. So, um, not gonna trade. he's not going to trade him. Right. That's kind of where we were at. You know, <laughs> we, yeah. we don't have to talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> um, another guy I picked. Uh, okay. So this was kind of a little bit of a homer pick and a little bit of I a, say. I listened to a guy, um, Bill Simmons, who's a huge Patriots fan, Red Sox fan and everything's from Boston. He lives in LA now, but listen to his podcast. And he was, he, I was kind of down on Booty just because of how he played, Kishon Booty and, uh, or Boot, some people might say. Um, yeah. A lot of people were, you know, his first year, he was, I'm like 80 catches, Electric, 100, yeah. 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns, something like that. You know, like he had a great year. I think he broke his ankle the next year. Yeah. And then the year after that, he just wasn't playing as well. It seemed like his attitude was kind of getting in the way. So uh, Patriots are really the perfect place to go, um, culture building style. To If you have an attitude, like they'll get, they'll, uh, they'll bust that out of you real quick, you know. So hopefully, and look, not even, I'm not even a Patriots fan or follow them that much, but I can tell you that they need, some electric people yeah. to th- that was kind of their thing last year is they had they had guys but no one was i mean if nelson aguilar caught the ball he might have ran for a touchdown but is that gonna happen and then they yeah. had some other guys uh myers who um a lot of times he wasn't getting he really a, open so when he caught the Raiders ball he was too. getting tackled yeah he wasn't there was no separation i guess is what i'm trying to say and booty even though he tested he didn't test well I think he plays fast, and um, yeah. I think that could be a pretty solid pick, um, especially if I mean, they're not having their defensive coordinator be their uh, offensive coordinator. You know, dude, <laughs> with, with nil deals with nil deals nowadays, I think he's a fool for leaving. I think he was a first round pick, projected first round pick before the season started. You know, he had a bad year, dude. Come back, just go sign an nil. He probably had one at Canes. Every time, every time I pass the Canes about they got some kind of LSU athlete on the thing. Yeah, he, really. He could have got any IL deal. He got what? He was a six round pick. Like if he'd a dude, that was a waste of talent. He dude's a, dude's a I stud. actually was reading the old article school. too. Just um, they had him as rated as the number one wide receiver coming out. Yeah, uh, he should have went back to school. Just in August of that. last year, you know. So he could have he could have showed that went back to school this year. LSU was going to be something nice this year. He could have came back for you know Jaden Daniels last year, mm-hmm. balled out with him. Brought us somewhere and then went back in the first round. Or even Some guys are just you know, ready to grow up. You know, you, you you want to get out of that college atmosphere and they'll grow you up at, in uh, yeah. Foxborough. You know, so I didn't. Uh, yeah. I made that pick kind of with knowledge of Patriots fans are really happy about it. So I was like, well, I mean, if they like the pick, like I mean, I might as well pick him. You know. Plus, he went yeah. to LSU. I like to get my LSU guys. Yeah. And um, sure. last, I got this tight end like we were talking about. I'm not. Yeah. I have um, my starters Kittle. And um, I kind of just picked Washington based on really just his size and like what he could be. This is dynasty. I got a starting tight end already. If Friar Muth yeah. gets hurt or if this guy just starts showing out, because you know the Patriots had Gronk and they had Aaron Hernandez, so there's team. You can have two tight ends that have good seasons if you're throwing to them. I think uh, a guy like Kenny Pickett, who threw to George Pickens a lot last year, because that George Pickens would go up and get the ball. Uh, uh, Washington's a guy who's going to go up and get the ball. He's huge, like we talked about, six seven, pretty fast for being two seventy two. So um, that was kind of why I made that pick. There was really no, that was third round. You know, there's really no running yeah. backs to have that I couldn't just pick up at the end of the year. I mean, at the free agency afterward, if I wanted them. So that was kind of where I'm at. Uh, my team's looking like Deshaun Watson starting QB, Nick Chubb, Tony Pollard. Amari Cooper, Mike Williams, Calvin Ridley, George Kittle, uh, Damon Pierce from Houston, Kadarius Tony at flex. Um, Solid lineup. You got yeah. Dotson on the bench. Dotson, Dotson the on the bench. I do like Pierce uh, from Indy, backup wide receiver who should have a better year this year. Khalil Shakir for uh, Buffalo. 
as a third, he really started coming on at the end of the year, six one, pretty fast uh, wide receiver for a quarter. Yeah, Fournette. Whenever he decides to sign somewhere, and that's kind of what I was saying too. I got Fournette. Um, I'm really just thin at running back, and I need to try to make a move um, because those injuries could happen at any time. Hey, bro, we my, only my have to start always two open running backs. Yeah, I mean, look, it's crazy too. If if we could show y'all what a what's in our entire uh, league. I mean, when it goes to running yeah. backs, most guys have like eight or nine running backs. So that's kind of why I'm short right now. There's not any guys <laughs> to be had. I think we, we roster like 20 people in this league too. So 24, 24. So we're talking the third string on, on most, the third string running back on most teams is already, is already, was already picked up, you know? So if I didn't make any moves to get into that first round to get anybody, I, I really would have wanted Charbonnet probably was actually uh, the running back I was looking for. I didn't hate like like I said earlier. I didn't hate that he went to Seattle um, because I think the guy's just going to show that he's really good. So he'll he'll carve a good role out for himself and eventually be. Um, he's kind of a guy I would target in the first few weeks to trade for. Um, if Walker's happen, if Walker's being a beast, you know, a lot of people will be like, "Oh, Charbonnet, this guy sucks." You know, you got to pay attention to your guys. There's, you know, if you, if you've been in the league for a few years too, you know certain guys who are quick to trade who are quick yeah. to cut bait on a guy. So kind of yeah. just pay attention. That's kind of the way I lurk. Eric's more of the salesman. He's going to text you. He's going to be like, hey, man, like I got this trade for you. I'm, I'm lurking. I'm like waiting for the right opportunity <laughs> to make a trade. Um, I also just really hate having to have these trade conversations with people a lot of the times. Like it just gets so annoying. Don't, uh, don't at the end be of the like day, that. So. Don't be like, don't be him, man. To have those conversations. It's yeah. You, he's all about. That's how it really I, works, too. Hey, I can see. Remember what he said? What remember doing, what he so. said? Yeah. Remember what he said a couple minutes ago? I've, we've been, this is a, this is our fifth year going. I've won twice. So yeah, there's a reason that I've won and you have not. So you don't like these conversations. You mm. need to start having them. Your team is nice and you can make it better. So I'm hoping that this will happen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so drafts out of the way. Uh, we're going to be coming at you guys once a week. We're going to record and then we're going to drop win episodes usually on Wednesdays, is what I would say. Uh, you know, give you a bit of, we'll give you a little bit of a rundown of the week that just happened going forward. Uh, let's see. I like. I like that schedule. What about what about you? What do you think? I think uh, I think yeah, it's a good medium. I was thinking maybe maybe uh, Monday night to drop Tuesday because a lot of guys have two have waivers early Tuesday morning. But Monday's a really tough day coming off of the weekend and stuff like just for and like, then the games are Monday lives. night too. You know, the right. games are Monday night too, so it's easier to do it. We talk on Tuesdays. Yeah, drop on Wednesdays. I so think that's why we yeah. agree with that. So I just want to like thank you guys one more time. Uh, fantasy six pack. We're part of these guys now. Might have misspoke last time. So we're, you know, uh, they're letting us on their channel. We're a part of that company now. So we want to let you guys know, just like I said before, go to subscribe to their YouTube channel. When you go and watch this video, become an all access member of fantasy six pack to get access to all of the award winning information, the rankings, the draft cheat sheets, the DFS projections, betting tools, and other great content. Best of all, you get access to us directly through our Discord, like I was telling you before. Hit us up on Twitter uh, too, for real. Yeah, dude. I'm always like I'm on Twitter episode, more than anything. So if you if you subscribe to this if you come and watch this episode, please drop a like. Please give us a share. You know, like I said, comment them below. We'll, we'll we'll comment back at you. Um Blake, you got anything else before we tell Look, if you here? watched this far and you listen to all of our little fantasy stuff, put something down in the comments. Say, I watched till minute 53. You know, I want to, we want to know which, who's watching all the way through. You know, we want to know who's here with us, who's building the fan, who's building the uh, fan base with us. Uh, we're going to be coming to you at weekly fantasy on tap. You know, um, that's really how we feel. But as you can tell, we're both into fantasy. We've been playing fantasy for a long time. I, I was playing fantasy before I was a teenager. I was 12 years old my first year. I got second place in a in a big money league. So I've uh, been playing fantasy a long time, and I think uh, just keep coming to us. You got Eric. He's going to tell you how to trade, and I'm going to tell you how to start your players. So I'm going to tell you who needs to be in the lineup. That's going to be my – that's where I'm the guru, okay? We're going to teach you how to win. Yeah, we want to see some. Uh, tell send us your send us your rosters too, man. If you if you haven't made a draft, if you're drafted already, if you're in dynasty league, and um, you know you're like, what do you? Well, I'll rate your I'll rate your draft. I'll rate your. Yeah, uh, I won't be too mean too. Come on, yeah. Sweet us, let us know. Give me your you draft. Like I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a letter you grade. We used to no have a guy in our league that would letter grade after the draft, and we all loved doing yeah. that. We we're like, oh, here, oh, take, <laughs> how did I draft, Bo? Right. And he would really go through it. He was kind of a guru in his own right, so he would go through it and tell you, "This is a B draft," you know. We'd be like, "Yeah, I did a B," you know. So that's always fun. So uh, thanks for being here with us, y'all. It's time to tap out. See you guys.
is it gonna let me in? <laughs> All right. Did you end it? It's still 